Hi guys, welcome back to Narcon. Um, today I'd like to talk about how to manage a narcissist as such if you're in a relationship with them or have to deal with them, you know, post discard or when the relationship has ended um, and how to protect yourself when you're getting into a new relationship as such. And it's all around emotions. So I'll get into it in a minute. But first of all, I'd just like to make an announcement. And that is that I'm doing a video or a series of videos with the channel, which I adore, called Trace Face or Trace Face It. Um, and we're going to cover an area that's uh, not kind of covered too often. It's um, how to deal with narcissists in the workplace. And the first video we're going to do is how to deal with a narc boss or what a narc boss actually looks like. Um, what we're asking prior to actually making the video is for anyone that has concerns about narcissists in general in their workplace, but particularly for the first uh, video of the series in relation to the narc boss, if you could send in, if you have any experiences of it or leave in the comments or email me, um, or if you have any questions about how to handle a situation in work, we're gonna put our two heads together and see if we can come up with um, some tips or some advice on how to deal with a narcissistic boss. So my email and also for coaching is narxcon at gmail.com. That's N-A-R-C-S-C-O-N, narxcon at gmail.com. Because I often don't mention that I offer coaching and sometimes people actually don't realize it. So it's there as a resource. If you want to reach out, just drop me an email. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's get into this in relation to kind of protecting yourself in your management of your transaction or relationship with a narcissistic person or someone who has a personality disorder in the narcissistic spectrum. So the main thing, you know, like clients will come to me and say, um, I know that I need to curb my emotional thinking. And a lot of you guys I know watch um, HG Tudor, who gives amazing advice in relation to dealing with narcissists, being a self-proclaimed um, narcissist and psychopath himself. And he will say that in dealing with narcissists, we need to put our emotions aside and think only logically. And it's very good advice. I would add something to that advice at the end of the video. So stick with it um, just, to, just to kind of add a little bit of empathic um, addition or clarity to that uh, advice. So when you're dealing with a narcissist, a lot of people, a lot of us will get into relationships and be very keen, particularly when a person mirrors us and makes us feel seen. And we do feel seen because narcissists are very good at seeing through people on all levels. They will be able to see your strengths. They're often very analytical people and they get to know you very quickly by asking pertinent questions and also by watching your emotional reactions and you also give them the information that they need to destroy you. What do you mean, Paula? What I mean is and I, this is the best, this is the best analogy I could come up with. And I was doing this recently. I bought um, something that needed to be assembled from Ikea and I followed the instructions and I managed, luckily enough, to get this unit made um, without it wobbling or whatever. So I followed the instructions to a T. When you give an emotional reaction to a narcissist, you are giving them the disassembly instructions, disassembly instructions to you. 
we're vulnerable. People of emotional empathy are vulnerable because we do not know that we're dealing with a cold, narcissistic individual who who uses your emotions as cues or as gaps in your defense system as a person. So they read your emotions as we would read instructions. Your emotions and your emotional output and your emotional imprint to a narcissist is telling them how they can manipulate you. And you're on the back foot or the wrong foot because you're trusting this person and you're giving your all and more than your all. You're giving your emotion, you know, your emotional reaction because you want to be open, transparent, um, loyal, you know, full of integrity and your truth. And you want this person to see you for who you are, even your flaws. And this is where we get to the crux of the matter. The narcissist is learning you initially and is seeing if they push your buttons and they often do this in, you know, the love bombing stage, they'll give you little test button pushes to see how you react emotionally, to see how under control you are. So they compute. It's like they get a digital computer image of your weaknesses and how they can maneuver you around. So your emotions are malleable to a narcissist. And they'll take an emotion and they'll use it as a weakness in you and they'll push you around with your emotions. They drive you with your emotions. They manipulate you through your emotional output and their emotional diagram of who you are and how you can be pushed around. Very diabolical because you don't operate from that um that platform. You operate um, with empathy. So you're not operating in, you know, you're not using somebody's feelings and somebody's humanity and somebody's identity and openness against them. So the other thing that we will do when we enter a relationship with a narcissist or even after the relationship or enter a relationship with anyone, if we're not awakened to the fact that there are individuals out there that do not operate from the same um, perspective or the same way we operate. We will often go into a relationship and because we want to be open and honest, we will tell the person about our past experiences. And again, a narcissist is listening intently to this because your words are telling them what your vulnerabilities are, your pain, what you've been through before. And often people will say to the narcissist, and this is what astounds them at the end, they cannot believe that this has happened. They will tell their worst fear to a narcissist. So let me think of an example. Um, OK, so you may say to a narcissist, the one thing that, say, my ex did or the one thing that really would hurt me. And I just want to tell you because just please, you know, you're saying basically, please don't do this to me. Um, I love you and I want to make things work. Uh, but what happened to me before or what, what really does hurt me or is is my breaking point is if you were to say, you know, text another woman or a man or whatever, whatever your relationship is um, in relation to your intimate um, relationship, someone that you, you know, you'd be maybe jealous of. If you're texting someone and they're a friend of yours or whatever, I'd love you to be open about it because I'm not a jealous type, but my ex say cheated on me and it's really important to me that we have a really open relationship. You go and see your friends or see whoever you want, but just don't keep things hidden from me because I have a vulnerability there because of my past experience. And, you know, you you are really trying to make the relationship work and you want them to know that and you trust them 
and they come back and say, oh, of course, I'd never do that. You know, you can trust me 100 percent. Well, if you've been dealing or dealing with a narcissist, that goes to the brain, the computer storage. And it's another piece of information added to the digital image of you and how to get how to get power over you to get them to get you to do what they want. So at the very end of the relationship, when they're in their angry stage, when they want uh, you to be punished for your perceived transgressions against them, and they always perceive people transgressing against them at, at with everybody. It happens with everybody. So do not feel that you've done something wrong or that you could have done something better. This is all, again, part of rumination with a narcissist. People always go against them at some stage in their minds and it can be tiny or it can be imagined. So don't beat yourself up over that. That's just a transgression. OK, so at the end of the relationship, I've had clients who will come to me and say, Paula, the one thing, the one thing I asked them and told them was the thing that would hurt me the most is the thing they did in the discard. I cannot believe that they would do that. And it's hard to get your head around it because you've been so open and so transparent, but you laid yourself bare to a narcissist. And that's the problem. And the other problem is, you know, when you're when you're dealing with a narcissist post discard, this is why people like H.G. Tudor and other people will say, go grey rock. Your emotional output is telling the narcissist that they're having an effect on you. And instead of, say, you saying, oh, please don't do this to the narcissist, the narcissist is never going to take pity on you. If you beg a narcissist or say that this is hurting you, it empowers the narcissist to do it more. So whatever works on you emotionally, and this is how narcissists operate in the world, they are only powerful if you tell them how to be par powerful over you. They can only hurt you if you show them how. And the only way they know how is by reading your emotional reaction. And that's why they say go grey rock or H.G. Tudor says, you know, get out of your emotional thinking, use your logical thinking to deal with the situation. And there's another aspect of that as well, not just that, not just the initial reading of your emotions, but also that you need to figure things out on a logical level when dealing with a narcissist and not get triggered. But it's all much and much of the same thing. So the only thing that I will add to that from an empathic point of view is we need our emotions. Don't throw your emotions away when you hear these pieces of advice. This is only related to a narcissist. Our emotions are what make us who we are. They're our identity. They're our empathy. They're our humanity. They allow us to operate as wholesome individuals, able to experience not just what the narcissist experience experiences emotionally, and that is envy, uh, jealousy, hatred, um, malign thoughts, um, depression, uh, dark thoughts, all that kind of spectrum of emotions. We are people of empathy or people of the light are able to experience both sides of emotions. We can also experience the bad ones, but we, we can experience peace, joy, love, trust, integrity, truth. So it's a more wholesome, it is a wholesome mix, whereas the narcissist's emotional spectrum is more on the dark side and is disordered. So our emotions don't, don't after you deal with a narcissist, become like a narcissist and only think logically, hold on to the emotions that will help ultimately help you recover and ultimately make you who you are. Still trust those emotions, 
still believe that you can open up to a new partner at some stage or new friends, still still allow yourself to be vulnerable. But when you're getting into a new relationship, no one deserves to know your your very private breaking point until they earn the trust and earn the respect to know that. So no matter how how you how much you want to open yourself up totally to a new person because you truly believe they are the one and they are wonderful, hold back. It's always good to have reserve, a reserve within you of your most precious vulnerable parts. What I would what I would advise and I advise myself to do this when you're getting to know someone new, hold something of yourself back. Because it's very important to check out the integrity of the person that you're going towards to give your precious love to and your precious trust to. And that comes back to respecting yourself as a person and loving the ability you have to love and the ability you have to trust and the ability you have to give. But don't go out into the world where there are definitely going to be enemies and say, say straight up, this is how you can destroy me. Great to tell them how they can love you, but hold back on the rest until you see actions of love and not just words of love. Always, always look for the actions rather than listen to the mind bending and gaslighting words that a person will say to you initially. And guys, there are really good people out there. I've met you. I've met you on one to one basis. I've met you here on the channel. So my trust in humanity is totally restored by our community. And I know it's just a case of avoiding narcissists. And there's a lot of us out there that are trying our best to maintain an empathic view and live in the light and the way we want to be. We're not perfect by any means, but remember your emotions are precious and there are things you need to guard when there are people out there who will use them to destroy you, who will use your emotions to destroy you. And narcissists are very, very good at reading. They can nearly read a movement of eyes. And that's not to scare anyone. It's just that that's how they hunt for their food. So they hone their skills and the older ones are far worse, guys. Oh, my God. The older ones are, you know, like cute, cute hunters and they need to be stopped. And the way we stop them is to get the message out there. <laughs> that was a good kind of um, way of getting people to please share the information. I, I'm serious about it. The more people that know about it, the less chance the narcissists have of trapping prey and destroying good people. That's it for now. And I will see you again soon, guys. And don't forget to send in if you have any questions about the narcissist. Narcissistic boss is the first thing we're going to cover. And that should be coming out in a week or two's time. So please send in questions or leave comments. Uh, or email me again, narxcon at gmail.com. And uh, we'll see what we can do in sorting out um, some situations there that are going on with narcissistic bosses who are making people's lives hell on earth. That's it for now, guys. Have a lovely Wednesday and I'll see you again soon. Take great care of yourselves in the meantime. Bye.